This printed page contains some fairly small type size, and at the end of the first sentence is a period. Now, if I move this printed page some distance from my eye, then I can no longer make out the period at the end of the sentence. However, if I move it up close to my eye, then I can very easily make out the period at the end of the sentence. The same is true with lights that make their own energy as street lights or car lights, uh, as opposed to pages of print which reflect light from somewhere else. And that is, the closer that you are to them, the better that you can see them. For example, in the nighttime, I can see a street light quite plainly. But if I go up into space, say 100 miles, then I can no longer see the street light, even though it is still shining quite brightly. And the same is true for the stars, which are very, very far away. Most of them you cannot see. You can only see a very tiny fraction of the number of stars that are really out there. And the reason is that those are the ones that you are close enough to for your eye to be able to see, to pick up enough light in order to see. All the rest of them are shining very brightly, but your eye cannot pick up enough light to actually see them. So the reason that this is true is because of the size of your eye. If this is a source of light, then it is emitting light rays in all directions. And inside of your eye is a lens. So if I put the lens at this position right here, then you see that the lens is intercepting some large number of light rays. Now, a light source will actually be emitting billions and trillions and uncountable numbers of light rays. So in this position that is close to the source of the light, your lens is picking up enough of the light rays so that you're able to discern it. Let's say in the scale of this drawing, we're picking up five or 10 light rays. However, if I move your lens out to this distance right here, and I make the light rays a little bit longer, then you see that your lens is now only picking up two or three light rays, which is not enough to actually recognize that there is a piece of light out there. So as your lens is a certain size, as we move it further and further away, the number of light rays that intercept your lens gets smaller and smaller and smaller until finally there's not enough light rays to actually cause you to recognize the light. So it is only the strength of the light that tells you whether you can see it or not. And the strength of the light is limited by the size of your eye. So let's make a few of these other light rays out here that are now missing your eye and causing you not to be able to see it. Now, is there any way that I could get more of this light into your eye? And the answer is yes, there is. If I could put a large curved piece of glass right here, then a piece of glass that is curved has a property that it will change the direction of light because the light is entering a less dense into a more dense medium. This is familiar to you if you look at the surface of a swimming pool and then you put a stick into the swimming pool so you know that the stick goes straight, but your eye perceives that the stick becomes bent. And the reason is as the light goes into the denser medium, it becomes bent itself. And the same is true of these light rays. As they go into the denser glass, then they are bent and so forth, they change their path. And their path now causes them to come into your eye instead of going straight as they would have without the piece of glass. So you see your not eye now effectively becomes the same size as the lens or piece of glass that's in front of it because this piece of glass is refracting the light rays that come in it and causing them to bend into an angle such that they can be picked up by your eye. So your not eye now effectively becomes as large as the lens. Now, there is another way that you can get these um, light rays to come smaller and put them into your eye. Suppose at the back side of your eye, we put a large curved mirror. Now, this mirror is curved in such a way that it has the property that all of these rays will be reflected 
to the same point. And as all of these rays are reflected to the same point, then that point is your eye. So by putting a large curved uh, reflector behind your eye, and then causing the light rays to reflect, if the shape of the curve of that uh, reflector is the right mathematical shape, and it's called a parabola, so if it is shaped as a parabola, then it will cause the light rays to all focus in on the same point. And then your eye effectively becomes as large as the mirror itself. So we make our telescopes on these two principles. The first is that we refract the light in front of your eye so that it bends <coughs> into a new angle that is smaller. Now these refractor lenses are limited in size to about three or four week, feet because then the glass becomes too heavy and it starts to sag of its own weight and it doesn't work anymore. But these reflectors can be built into a very solid base and therefore there is a much larger limit on their size and our larger ones are about 12 or 13 feet across that will concentrate the light that is coming in into one point of your eye. So these are called reflector telescopes and they work on this principle that we have just described. Now the beauty of the reflector telescope is not only can it be larger in size, but it will focus lights of all colors, red, green, yellow, and blue, into exactly the same point. But the property of the refractor, or the one that bends it, is that different colors will be bent slightly different angles. So you will get some smearing of the colors as you see them with your eye. So this is the principle of the reflecting telescope, and this is the principle of the refracting telescope. Now, you're already actually familiar with the principle of the reflecting telescope, because if I reverse the situation here, and instead of putting in a eye, suppose we put in a source of light at this position, so it emanated light in all directions, then when that light struck the parabolic surface, it would all be reflected into the same parallel beam. So this is the principle behind a searchlight, or an ordinary flashlight. And to illustrate it more clearly, if we have a point source of light here, it's radiating light in all directions. And if we put a large curved parabolic mirror behind it, then the shape of the parabola is such that when all of these light rays hit it, they are bounced off parallel in exactly the same direction. So you develop a very strong beam going out. And this is the way that your car headlights work, that they have a point source of light in front of a parabolic mirror which reflects all the light into a strong beam in the forward direction. At least that's the way they used to work because now we have improved techniques so that we don't use a parabolic reflection but we collimate all of the light into a laser and direct it forward directly instead of indirectly by reflection. So the same principle is used in an ordinary flashlight which we have here for example. It has a bulb in the middle which makes the light but the light that you see effectively is not the light from the bulb, it's the light that's reflected from the parabolic surface around it. And as we come in closer to the camera, then you can very easily see that there is a metallic reflective shape there that is parabolic in nature and is actually what causes the beam to emerge. Thank you.